invite you to please stand. behalf of Joanne's family and Faith Lutheran, I welcome you today. I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. We are here gathered to worship, proclaim Christ crucified and risen, and to remember before God our sister Joanne, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort each other in our grief. Amen. We will now sing together the beloved hymn, How Great Thou Art, as printed in your bulletin.
When we are baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We're buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. If we've been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Let us pray. I invite you to pray with me. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Joanne, we thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until, by your call, we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all of your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. The rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And from Revelation, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw this holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I'm making all things new. And he also said, Write this, for the words are trustworthy and true. And then he said, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now hear Eagle's Wings. <laughs> Snow. 
it shall not come, and he will raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun. Gospel from John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it in the heart of Judas, son of, his, of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And so during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he'd come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe, and he tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus said, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Uh, Jesus said, one who has bathed doesn't need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. So when he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, then God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. So little children... I'm with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment. You love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's been 226 days. But this day now has finally arrived. We've had to wait, thank you to COVID, but we've been able to now gather safely today. COVID also took Joanna's, Joanne's life before we were ready to say goodbye. It prevented us from physically being with her at the end like we would have wanted to. And so with that comes sadness and anger and grief all mixed together. Certainly a few added frustrations out of the ordinary because of this pandemic. You throw in the dementia which was bringing about fear and confusion. I won't lie, it's easy to lament that it just isn't fair. But now, today, those feelings can come out. And we can gather to remember the reason why we're here. To celebrate that Joanne, called by name, is a child of God, beloved, and is now in heaven. That fog that had covered her mind is lifted. The pain from pneumonia and struggling to stay healthy those pains are gone. She's at peace. She's experiencing the abundant joy and love of God. We can thank God that we have that hope to lean on. We can thank God that we know the love of our Savior who came into this world so that we wouldn't perish but have eternal life. 
So today's service is really an important step in our own healing and moving forward in grief. At the end of this worship, now that the rains have passed, we'll be able to walk outside. We'll be able to walk into the garden. We'll be able to put her ashes into this columbarium, into this final resting place. This will be a place that you can come to anytime to say hello, to put your hand on the grave, and say a prayer to her in heaven. You can come to this garden and pray. You know, before Jesus famously went to a garden to pray, he was also doing some important things to prepare his disciples for what was going to happen when he was no longer with them. His disciples didn't get a chance to say goodbye the way they wanted. They were surprised by the events that would unfold. They were shocked by the way Jesus would get taken away. But as Jesus is bringing them together for the Last Supper, the disciples probably thought this was just supper. But Jesus knew. So he takes this opportunity to teach them, not just through his words, but through his actions. This, friends, is how to live. So he gets down onto the floor, takes the form of a servant. He starts washing the feet of his disciples. The ones following him, he is now acting as the servant to them and teaches them that that's how you care for each other. Wash each other's feet, serve one another, and then the commandment to love one another. Everyone will know that you are Jesus' disciples if you have love for one another. It may sound simple, but just consider how much of an impact that message has transformed this world, how much it transformed Joanne. Love in the face of fear, love during times of struggle, love, love, love is what mattered. She took that to heart. She loved you. She loved her family so much. She loved to show you that love, to care for you, to be with you, to create lasting memories, to travel with you, to enjoy the outdoors, to just be in your presence. This was abundantly clear that she understood love. She understood service. My lasting impression and memory of her will be her beautiful personality, how she, lo she loved to serve others as a waitress or at the deli. Her smile was a window into that personality, wasn't it? It was so inviting and so comforting, that twinkle in her eye. I loved when she would walk into the sanctuary for the 1030 service or when I could sit with her for the Wednesday Lenten lunches and just be in her presence. She always just made you feel good, like a, like a great big hug. So I think about all the ways that she showed that love to you and to all of us gathered here today, how she made you feel special, how she wanted you to know that you were loved. Love is at the heart of the new heaven and the new earth that we hear about in the book of Revelation. Bob, I was thinking about you when I read that passage. You have some of the best water I've ever drank in my life. You've actually brought it in in milk jugs for me, and I've been able to enjoy this delicious, thirst-quenching water. You've taken pride in your water. You could bottle it up like Dasani, and, and everyone would want this well water of yours. It's crystal clear and cool, deep from the earth. Now, here's the deal. I could drink that water, but eventually, if I start doing something else and I don't have your water with me, I'm going to go thirsty. Now, John, the writer, I know, I, it's hard to believe that I could eventually go thirsty. Now, John, the writer of the book of Revelation, he speaks about this thirst too, how this thirst is quenched by the Alpha and the Omega, that this water in heaven is actually a gift from the spring of eternal life. So the last thing I'm going to leave you with is this. Now, Joanne, she got to drink that water of yours. I mean, like, think about that. She was drinking this thirst-quenching water every day here on earth. But what a gift it is for us today to know that the water that she drinks is the water of life, the eternal gift of our gracious God and creator in heaven. We don't have to fear. She's at peace, and her thirst has been quenched. Amen. I invite you to join me 
as we are going to join in the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed in our bulletins. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty God, in the pure waters of baptism, you have knit your people together into one communion of saints. We ask that you give to your whole church here in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly God, give courage and faith to all who mourn. Give us a sure and certain hope that in your loving care, as we cast our sorrows upon you, that we may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, help us in the midst of things that we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death and through his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come can separate us from your love in Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Joanne. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming, Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. We join together in this, this song of proclamation, this song that tells us about God's amazing grace. You're invited to sing with us. Appear. 
stand and before we head outside we invite everyone to follow the, uh, the family will go immediately out into the prayer garden uh, and then after a few words out in the garden we will take that time as we uh, invite you back in for some time for fellowship and lunch and be able to uh, share some good memories of Joanne go in peace serve the Lord Amen. thanks be to God <laughs>